Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to be kit bashing the Phobos Strike Team Kill Team, that's a bit of a mouthful, into, uh, well, something a bit different. So as a kid in the late 70s, I used to love 2000 AD, and obviously one of the main characters I used to love from that, well, was Judge Dredd. So I thought it would be cool to make up a team of judges, and obviously their leader being, well, Judge Dredd. So a lovely guy called Rick over at the Tabletop Hobby Blog kindly sent me the Phobos team for free. There is a link in the description guys for the Tabletop Hobby Blog, so pop over there and go and show it some love and have a little read and mooch around. As this kill team was part of a, a, a starter sort of set, obviously it doesn't come with instructions, but you can find them easy enough by going on Google, uh, well you can find anything going on Google I guess these days. So yeah I found out where the, uh, the assembly instructions were, and unlike the Orcs and Kriegs that I assembled, I'm actually assembling these in a way that I kind of want them to be. Uh, as opposed to the Orcs and Kriegs where I, well, literally assembled them, how I thought they would look good. Uh, so now I am actually making teams up that are going to obviously work better together. So usual thing, get the sprues, uh, try and find all the numbers and cut the pieces off. Uh, sometimes the numbers are near each other, but more often than not, GW, well, they like to hide them here and there. Sometimes on different sprues. And then once all the parts are off, it's just a case of sort of tidying them up. Uh, in general, they come off nice and clean. But sometimes there's a little few sprue bits still attached, or even some mold lines. So yeah, just get a nice sharp scalpel and scrape them off. So as opposed to the glue I'm, I usually use, um, obviously I'm going to go for them with a brush, just because obviously it is so much simpler and neater. Um, and you certainly get less glue, well, all over the place. If you've seen some of my last videos when I was assembling stuff, you will have seen sometimes the glue comes out a little fast, and ends up on my desk and fingers and all over the place. So yeah, so I'm giving the old brush glue a go. And yeah, there we go. Uh, one thing I do find sometimes, I can be a little impatient, as you'll see here, when his leg falls off, because obviously the glue hasn't quite dried. So obviously I'm taking off his little emblem that is on his chest, because, well, I don't want that. Um, I just want a nice, clean sort of chest plate. And again, good old scalpel, scrape along the top. That gets rid of most of it. Um, and once I've got as much off as I can, then I've got some nice fine sandpaper. I'm using the old wet and dry here, which is pretty cool. This is super fine. Uh, but obviously the good thing with this is you can get the piece wet and then it sort of buffs it up even better. And obviously that's exactly what I do here, just by wetting my finger and then rubbing that over the piece and then yeah, carrying on sanding it down. And then it's good to go. That's the chest piece nice and smooth. The legs are, well, they're fully attached now. And yeah, now I can get on and crack on with his arms. Um, simple little pose. Obviously just on my hand sort of pointing forwards because obviously he's the, uh, the leader. So he's kind of like pointing his troops where they're meant to go. And obviously a good gun. So one thing he has got, old Judge Dredd, and that is, it's kind of like a utility belt like Batman. He seems to have pouches galore all around his waist. Um, and he even has a few of them on his, uh, his arm. So obviously I'm taking all the pouches off. Um, I only want the small little ones. So obviously in this case of cutting these. So I am pretty much using all the pouches that come with the set uh, for Judge Dread. So the other judges, whilst they are going to have the shoulder pads and the helmet and everything else, they probably won't quite have as many of these pouches as they should, mainly because obviously Judge Dread is kind of getting them all. So talking about the head and shoulder pads, uh, obviously I've 3D printed these using my Anycubic Photon Mono, um, well just because I can. Uh, you can buy some sort of similar kind of like Judge Dread heads and shoulders, uh, but obviously I wanted to 3D print mine because I wanted mine to look exactly like uh, the old Judge Dread that I used to uh, love it and know. Um, obviously, Judge Dread did change a little bit over the years and changed even more, obviously, in a couple of the films. Uh, absolutely hated the one that Stallone was in, mainly because obviously he took his helmet off. Well, I don't know about taking it off, I think he never really wore his helmet. Um, so, yeah, I much preferred the second Judge Dread film a lot more sort of how I remember the character even though obviously he didn't quite look um, as he did back in the 70s. So yes, yeah, so I'm using the uh, the original sort of like looking head and shoulder pads and yeah, there we go. Use, use a bit of the old green stuff. Obviously as you can see, it well, doesn't look very green. Uh, definitely more blue and yellow. And obviously the reason this stuff's called green stuff is when you mix them together, lo and behold, you get some green stuff. So, yeah, so I cut out the middle bit there. Obviously where these two are joined in the pack Sometimes, if you get an older pack, where they are meeting in the middle, um, it, it's gone hard. Oh, are, madam. 
So yeah, I normally cut the sander bit out, whether it's gone hard or not, just because it's it's a lot smoother, the outer edge bit. And then yeah, just keep rolling it, rolling it, rolling it. You get some green stuff. Um, and the thing I love about this, I, don't, I haven't really used it much, but when I do use it, the stuff I really like is the fact you put it on something, you don't have to glue it on. Um, obviously it's like plasticine, so it will just kind of stick. But then obviously as it dries and firms up, um, it does make a good contact and a good bond. There's only a few bits I need to make with the green stuff. Uh, obviously his knee pads, which is obviously what I'm making now. And then later on I'll make his shoulder pads in exactly the same way. So fairly simple, which is good, because obviously I'm going to need to do this on the other five team members. So while I'm doing that, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons, as well as my sponsors, for helping fund this channel, so I can continue to buy the bits and pieces I need, and to obviously make videos like this. If you want to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. Uh, it's only £2 a month, and as I say, it does help me well, keep buying stuff that I need. And a big thank you to my sponsors as well. There's links in the description to both of those. Obviously, any cubic, awesome 3D printers, an easy roll of dice for, well, loads of dice. And they really do have a large variety. So, yeah, go check them out, guys. So, obviously, back to this, as you can see, yeah, I'm still going. Um, even though these are very simple things to make, they did kind of take quite a while. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that now I've made one sort of set, when I make the rest, it will be a lot easier because I kind of know more of what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, it, it basically it took more time getting into shape than actually obviously putting these little lines in to indicate, um, well, the knee pads. Obviously these are kind of like outdated old style knee pads, uh, but then again, say this character is from the late 70s. Uh, I think it was 77 uh, Judge Dredd first appeared in the, uh, the second, second volume or second comic strip of 2018. I think. Don't quote me, because I've got a memory, like I said. So obviously the few other bits he needs, um, again, because I am now looking into obviously what these characters are meant to have on them, um, this character, or this sergeant, does have a gun and daggers, so obviously that's why I'm sticking them on him. Uh, obviously the original Judge Dredd, I don't think he ever had daggers, but he certainly had a, a gun strapped to his uh, his leg. Um, oh, in fact, I think this, this sergeant guy doesn't have the pistol, but I put the pistol on him because it looks more like Judge Dredd. Anyway, I'm waffling now, let's get back to uh, kind of what I'm doing. Um, yeah, the other thing with these, the backpack, or thruster, jetpack, whatever you want to call it, it normally sits quite high up, which I don't like, because then when you see it from the front, it kind of, well, it's there. So that's the reason why I've gone for a jetpack that's nice and low, just so you can't see it from the front. So yeah, good old Judge Dredd's head, um, it kind of looked too big. So, good thing that 3D printer, I'll just go and print another one, a little bit smaller. And then I printed it too small. So as you can see, big head, little head, and yeah, off of his head. <laughs> uh, but again, 3D printing, awesome. So if in doubt, just print out loads of different size ones. Um, I think I've only actually got three different sizes here, but I kind of printed five of each. Um, or did I print six? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll obviously need to print loads of heads for all the other figures that I will be doing. So yeah, it was just a case of doing a few heads, offering them up, um, and then seeing which one sort of looked, looked best. I mean, literally the difference in some of these heads is like half a mil, uh, which isn't much, but on something this sort of size and scale, uh, it is very, very noticeable. So as it says on the screen, I think it pretty was about six or fifth time lucky um, that I got a, a size head that um, yeah, I was happy with. As I say, I printed off loads more because obviously I do need to make well loads more judges up. Uh, obviously, I wanted to make Judge Dread first, just so I can make sure I liked how he looks. And say, so is then the case of just repeating this for all the other steps. So this is his little badge, uh, tricky little thing. Obviously, there's a lot more footage of me trying to put this badge on, um, but I didn't include it. Literally, I was kept moving it around, moving it around, then it fell off. Then it got stuck to the desk, then it stuck to my knife, and it was just hilarious in the end. So yeah, looking for a little chain to go on, to obviously keep on his uh, his badge. Got a few little chains and bits and pieces here. Um, some of them are obviously too big, some of them look like, well, barbed wire. That's because it is barbed wire. Um, and then this thing, I'm not even sure what I got this for, but it kind of looked the best. And um, yeah, I went with that. So yeah, again, more, <laughs> more of these little pouches. Um, I think he's probably got more of these than Batman. Uh, what he keeps in all of them, I don't know. Maybe a notebook pen, who knows. 
obviously this is back in the 70s so it certainly wouldn't have been your, your tablet or your your phone or any of that kind of gadgets um yeah would have been more likely to be in pens and paper so a little bit more green stuff so this was the um for the uh, elbow pads um uh, and yeah it did them exactly how i did the knee pads um they were a bit quicker again because i've done the knee pads i kind of knew what i was doing and what shape i was going for um so it did make it a lot easier but as you can see yeah with green stuff the best thing to do is to keep it wet uh because then that way it's easier to move around it doesn't stick to whatever tool you're using and yeah just generally it's so much easier to use it does take a good uh, i want to say at least half an hour maybe 45 minutes for this stuff to start curing um so yeah so what i did was i did a little bit first as in his knee pads i let that cure then i did the uh, the little bits on his feet and then i did the uh the shoulder uh, elbow pads just because if you do too much at once there's a fair chance you're going to squish a bit you've already done so anyone new to the channel, um, yes, I do talk lots, and yes, sometimes I do waffle on. Um, that's just me and how I make my videos. Because <laughs> I did get a comment in one of my last videos saying, boy, you talk lots, and it's like, yeah, I do. But then I have done videos where I don't talk much, and everyone's like, well, why aren't you talking? But as you can see in the video, uh, let's get back to that. He's all ready. He's now primed. I'm going to do the slap chop method, or the underbrush method, or whatever else you want to call this method. Basically, nice and easy, three steps to this. One, prime in black. Two, do the uh, obviously dry brushing or under brushing. Um, I generally use a grey and then I use a white. Um, just because obviously this will then add all the, the highlights and that sort of stuff on the figure. Obviously the areas that the dry brush doesn't get to will stay nice and dark, which is awesome. Because uh, obviously that's all the, uh, the shadows. And then once all that's done, we then go over it with the contrast or speed paint. So I say, it really is that simple. Um, I generally go over with the, uh, the dry brush quite a bit because even though obviously the grey starts off relatively light, it does seem to sort of fade and dark, darken down a little bit. Um, but then obviously I go around with the white. Again, just doing sort of the dry brush. And with this, I try and hit it a little bit less. So it really does just capture uh, the top edges. Obviously, sometimes I don't just get the top edges. I get well a whole lot more um, but again that's fine I just love the fact that it isn't a uniformed sort of color it is um, well very slap happy which I absolutely love and then yeah good old speed paints now, I've got speed paints I've got contrast paints and I'm soon gonna be trying some dipping paints um, I only came across these a, a few days ago from uh, from green stuff um, yeah so keep an eye out for that guys when I do get the uh, the dipping stuff we'll uh, be do using that in the old slap chop method so yeah the good thing with this is it really is like you're just going around um, using block colors because obviously because you've got that under brushing underneath that's obviously going to show out or show through the contrast or the speed paints so yeah you just pick whatever color you want to use um, and then go over and paint as though it's a block color so yeah I was looking through obviously all the pictures to try and get the colors and all that right um, his shoulder pads they seem to change color in a few of them sometimes they look yellow sometimes they look golden um, and I really wasn't too sure which color I wanted to go for I didn't really use the gold so much because obviously I haven't got a speed paint for the gold so that would look well like a solid gold so I thought I'll use yellow um, but the thing with the yellow that I've got it kind of comes out more orangey which to be fair isn't too bad in this case because obviously I was torn between doing a yellow and a gold so I guess being orange uh, it's kind of in between somehow um, so yes yeah, so that's the color I went for um, yeah not too many colors with Judge Dredd really uh, obviously his main suit is blue uh, obviously uh, he's got his green boots and um, sort of gauntlets or gloves or whatever you want to call them and then yeah a bit of the gold and then obviously the helmet black so yeah fairly nice and simple and so he's definitely using this method obviously incredibly simple so you guys might be able to tell, but I'm absolutely loving the kill teams. Uh, even more so now that I'm going to be doing quite a lot of kit bashing. Um, so I think all the kill teams that I actually make are going to be, well, not how they were originally intended or originally looked. Uh, so obviously I'm going to have this team of judges. But also from 2000 AD was a, a guy called Rogue Trooper. Uh, basically a muscly sort of trooper, pretty enhanced uh, and blue. So I'm looking at making a, a kill team of troopers with obviously rogue trooper as the leader um, there's also abc warriors 
which was like a bunch of robots. Um, so yes, I wouldn't mind making a kill team from them. Um, but I've also just finished making, or almost finished making, a kill team uh, with Darth Vader and some Stormtroopers. So yeah, as you can see, I'm going to be making lots of kill teams, but I'm going to be making them a bit more personalised uh, and how I want them. And I'm even considering making a kill team with uh, Scooby-Doo and the gang. Um, so that should be a pretty fun one. So yeah guys, if you know who I should make the Scooby-Doo and a gang from, uh, let me know because obviously ideally it'll be some sort of kill team with a dog. And there we go, there's Judge Dredd uh, nicely completed. Um, I'm very happy with how he came out and I'm loving the colours. So just a case of now getting him on a base. Uh, this is where I think there's a bit of a, a divide on people's preferences on bases. Uh, personally, I've always preferred clear bases just because I like to see, well, the terrain that they're under or is under them. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So yeah, obviously to paint these, I stuck these little rods in his feet. Um, they come off nice and easy, even though I use super glue on these. It is just a case of giving them a little twist and they just pop out, which is great because I can then use them again. But obviously where the glue and paint was underneath his foot, there's a little raised area. But that comes off simply enough just by doing a little bit of sanding, as you can see here. So yeah, sand a little bit, go around in circles, all over the shop um, until it's nice and smooth. And then he's ready then to glue onto the nice clear base. Okay guys, that's him pretty much done. Um, let's see him in his, all his glory on uh, my lovely Kill Team base. Okay guys, well that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to let me know what kind of kill teams you think I should make next. And if you are new here and you like what I do, hit that subscribe button. You get informed of all the videos I do. There's at least one a week now, maybe two. And yeah, hit that like button guys, leave some comments down below, show a bit of love and all that. Um, yeah, that's it guys, you take care, bye for now.